Hi, my name is Jake. I am one of the festival directors at Cape Town Electronic Music Festival. So our festival started in 2012 um, after a couple of years of conversation and, and conceptualizing. Um, we sat in a very interesting place in the South African music landscape um, in that in 2012 the world is obviously very different. Um, and there was a need for a dedicated electronic music festival which was kind of a little bit more left-leaning um, and focused on the outliers and wasn't just a, a big pop music festival. Luckily at the time there was nothing like it around um, and we were always kind of relegated to the second or third stage at bigger music festivals. Luckily Cape Town, South Africa and Cape Town in particular have a very rich uh, like outdoor psychedelic trance uh, legacy um, and there was always a need for house and techno and electronica within that space um, and we started it kind of as a as a reaction and as a very much needed departure from what was going on. So Cape Town Electronic Music Festival has happened in uh, I think it's five different venues around Cape Town now. Um, we're lucky in that we've got some fantastic buy-in from uh, the city of Cape Town. Um, and they've been able to help us with some great venues, including the City Hall um, and the Grand Parade, which is really in the heart of Cape Town. Um, we've moved a little bit further out of the city, but I think that the... The, the, the common thing that kind of ties them together is that we're very much an inner city electronic music festival. Um, somewhere where people can pop in and pop out um, and it's not like a massive schlep out to a wineland four hours away or whatever. Not to say that that's uh, not very much needed, we're just a departure from that. So um, as I mentioned previously, we've bounced around quite a bit. Um, the one common denominator in the venues that we look for is that we always look for a multi-space venue or a multi-floor venue so that we can, um, we can kind of, um, we can cater to all sides of our sound and the sounds of our scene. Uh, I think that a big outdoor, big indoor space um, has a very different sound uh, to a small indoor club space which is more conducive for kind of intimate uh, sounds, heavier stuff sometimes. Um, and with the legacy of Cape Town's outdoor scene, there's definitely something beautiful about a sunny Cape Town day outside or a, a cold, brisk evening outdoors. And it just dictates different uh, programming, different music. So again, linking back to uh, the, the roots of the festival, we were very much focused on um, on electronic music. Um, in 2012, that looked very differently to how it looks now. Um, but I think, yeah, we've got a we've got a strong electronic music um, DNA, and uh, we still look to kind of stick to that brief that there is some sort of um, electronics and synths, and whether they are live drum kits on stage and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's very much an ethos and a, and, a, and a vibe that we look for. So the first Cape Town Electronic Music Festival in 2012, we were quite adamant on booking all local artists. Um, I think in South Africa, we've got a funny thing about international validation. So it was quite important for us to just have local, all local lineups. So we focused on our local heroes, people like Black Coffee, people like Cybot. Um, kind of uh, the artists who have now made it, uh, some of them have made it very big, some of them have continued on their path of making music, um, but our lineup was pretty extensive and I, I think it's actually still up on our website if you go through the history of our festival. The most memorable sets for me, look we've been going for, this year was our ninth year, um, albeit quite different to the last eight years because of Corona. Um, but it's quite difficult to pin down one set in particular that was 
very memorable um, just because they've all been so different and they've all had their unique styles and sounds and they've been very memorable moments. Uh, certainly a couple of highlights. Um, having Octave One play in the City Hall on main stage was very special, just kind of having that kind of full circle uh, Detroit sound that kind of birthed our festival in terms of the um, the Detroit uh, the Detroit Electronic Music Festivals. That was incredibly special to have Octave One here. It was amazing to have uh, Richie Horton in the first year. Um, it was incredible to have DJ Jazzy J. That was a huge one for me, just because that was really the birth of, the birth of electronic music as it were, uh, arguably in many senses, but certainly in a sense of hip hop. And in a sense of having such a legacy and having this like, absolute legend that's touched so many of our lives um that was very very special but they've just been as i speak i realize there's so many difficult ones to pin down and to mention we don't necessarily stick too deeply to a target audience i think it's really fun to just let people be free and be themselves and come and have a dance and uh, socialize and a drink and all the good stuff that comes along with partying um, in the middle of their city. Um, we also look to sometimes educate people. I think we've garnered the ability to, uh, to do that at our festival. People aren't just necessarily coming to hear stuff that they've heard only. Um, and for us, it's, uh, it's been incredible to be able to do that. Um, but really, you know, to say the electronic music lover is a, it's a silly thing. It excludes people who don't know that they love electronic music yet or the varying breadths of the genre or the art form or whatever it is. So we just kind of, uh, we, we open, we're open to all kinds of people coming. I think the fact that we're an, an, an inner city electronic music festival that still stays very true to our roots, um, that still stays very true to the idea of having the workshop period before our festival, um, as well as the satellite events that we events that we host around uh, the city and around the country, um, as well as the weekend festival, as well as our CTMF Connect program, um, which is more of an outreach program and, a, and quite literally a connector um, between artists that we bring over and artists within our country and artists within different scenes. I think that we definitely look at electronic music as much more of a, a holistic art form and, and much more of a kind of life affirming thing than just, oh, it's a quickie, fly by night music festival, get some artists and we'll have a jewel and uh, be hedonistic and uh, everything goes on as business on Monday. Um, we've always really loved this art form and we're very happy to be able to contribute to it. Um, as well as get something from it. So I think that really sets us apart, specifically in South Africa. I think within the context of South Africa and within the context of how people view electronic music, and specifically the fact, to be dead honest with you, that we're, we sit in a very interesting place. We're not a huge conglomerate music festival like we've started to see in South Africa over the last couple of years. Um, and we're also not an incredibly underground, subversive, uh, all the way outlier festival. We kind of sit somewhere in the middle and bring all of those things together under one roof with um, the common goal of kind of like integrity and, and love for the art form, all that kind of stuff. It often, it, 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 it's very difficult to sell to a mainstream pop music audience or whatever that means in terms of the brands involved in that and the whole ecosystem that goes on around that. Um, they want extremes. The world's very polarized. So the underground people want the most underground one dude in a bedroom with no lights on. Um, and the uh, mainstream kind of wants that huge conglomerate music festival feeling. So that sometimes presents itself as a tricky, tricky obstacle for us. I would definitely say, I would definitely be remiss to not chat about COVID-19 
and what effect it's had on our festival and on the music industry in the last year. Um, I think that this this whole thing has completely shifted the consciousness of, of, of our race as humans, of what's important, what, what, what things are fundamentals, what things are really important to us as individuals without having so much focus on what others are into. Um, and that's definitely reflected in the hobbies and in the music and, and, and in the space that people are kind of having during COVID to be able to understand what they're into, what they love, what they want to speak up for, what they want to be about. And I really hope that um, I really hope that music gets back to being an art form as opposed to a sport, which it's become in the last couple of years. Um, and we've always we've always loved that. It's always been something that comes out of you. Why why do you make music or why do you listen to music? It's an emotional response as opposed to a kind of like a sport where you just get want to be better and better. Um, so I think it's very important to say that, you know, as much as we want to just get back to normal is a stupid word, but as much as we just want to get back to how things were before, I think it's very important within the context of music and in the context of electronic music and growing this art form and growing the festivals and the artists and the DJs around it, all that kind of stuff, to really absorb the space that it's given us and absorb the kick in the ass that it's given us. Um, to be able to reassess things and figure out really, you know, what we allow into our lounges, what we allow into our headspaces and our headphones and our festivals and all that kind of stuff and just try and make this thing as safe and rad and as inclusive and, and holistic and really honest as possible. Um, that's our goal.